Welcome everyone. Thank you for joining me for this week of my podcast show, Surviving Your Journey to a Success. I'm Nichelle Anderson, your host, and this week we're going to focus on for episode 38 to be published on October the 22nd, 2018 for my season two return of my show, 2018 to 2019. This episode is entitled, How Prestige Leaders Manage Their Team Ship. And I came up with this later in the summer because I felt that it needs to be focused on and I'm not sure (laughs) probably someone has probably already you know touched on it but you know I'm gonna put my hat in the bucket there and give my point of view of how important that when you are the leader of other managers it's not just the employees that you're getting feedback from or you might know of their duties and so forth because that's your job of the whole organization but it's important to actually to to manage and to monitor and to access the subordinates in the sense of managers underneath you okay and we're going to talk about why that's important what strategies you can use you know so i can help you to take another look at and another angle because that can deliver my goal is and motivating people through my writing and through my passion of of helping right contributing to the circle of life so let's go ahead and get started so in this day I'm thankful to the prime creator of all things that I give thanks for the blessing and opportunity that I will use it for the greater good so welcome my survivors of the journey to my podcast that aims to inspire and motivate you so you can continue to have joy peace of mind and for your sustained success all right so let's just get into it this week where we're focusing on for this episode 38 how prestige leaders manage their team ship okay how prestige leaders manage their team ship okay how can you do that well it's about identifying your immediate link to the employees that do the job right will they provide the sustainability to uphold your brand message your brand message defines your leadership i'm going to do a future podcast about how you can measure what prestige leadership entails i know last season i brought that out my first term my first year in podcast and i brought that term phrase out prestige leadership prestige because that is the optimal that is the ultimate level to show that you got what it takes you have strong influence people follow you I know in today's world we talk about what we need in a sense to purchase this and to have this and that ties into money but money is not the only factor to motivate people to come back to the job to support you to work for free it's the way that you come across in your message and your brand and how you are influencing people that will be the tests of time beyond your time that people will still talk about you. you it's more powerful. It's not that you seek in power to control, but power in the sense that you get things done. That's what prestige leadership is. They get things done, but they do it in a way that do not degrade other people, that do not abuse their authority. Now, let's say in this whole episode, we're talking that you already got that. But this angle is I want you to focus on to continue to up your game, right? And that means we're focusing not on the employee level, the employees. We're focusing on the managers that report back to you. Because believe it or not, if you do not look at that and you do not manage that and oversee it, then whatever that you do do, and you probably doing a heck of a job a class okay something that will make me proud <laughs> it would deter any type of objective initiative you're trying to make and it and it hurts your brand so the important point let's get into that when we get into this episode is that a prestige leader still assess their hired managers that are in line to the team ship protocol now I named this episode a ship because you got to think of it you are the captain you either a CEO a VP or a manager of team leads whatever whatever you know what I'm talking about and so that's your ship and you should have a team ship protocol that reinforce your brand your personality on the business level that they are implementing they're taking that blueprint 
okay and I'm not gonna get a shout out yeah I'm gonna give a shout out to my course blueprint for your success but it's important because that's your foundation that's your checks that's your check off that's your outline that's your 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 value book your mission statement right the protocol for them to follow that the managers that report to you are actually doing what they are committed to do what they are committed to do when they got hired either by you or someone else and they sustain the continuum that's important the continuum the business continuum of your brand message that reinforce and tied into the vision of the company all right the protocol to respect should be in that protocol in that blueprint to lead with effective decisions that they show strong interpersonal skills I think that is the number one issue with sub the the second rank of managers is their interpersonal skills are not there that they use their authority maybe to write someone up just because they ask a question or or maybe just to be more restricted on the flexibility of the particular organization that normally if you would have known about that you would have approved it in a sense that they can have some type of flexibility in that scenario or they should not have gotten written up on something that you look at is very petty going to get really to the heart of it and sometimes it can be very toxic sometimes it can be very not really good topic to focus on but you want to sustain your prestige leadership you earn it you should keep it you gotta manage it and you gotta check it to make sure everybody's in line and also you want to measure these these particular line of managers underneath you that they're they don't have any problem in repeating your brand message of a team player good communication a follow-up to employees you know their behavior in meetings either when you're there or not there sometimes when you're there you don't really see the whole picture but that's what you got to put in place to monitor those areas that are key to defining your message because believe it or not most people most employees are not just going to look at the manager they were pointing to that's the problem they're going to look at the person that hired them the person at the top because in their mind they're thinking at the end of the day they should be knowing what's going on we shouldn't have to risk our job to report you to report that particular manager that's not following the brand we're being told one thing from the CEO or the VP but then actuality on the team is something totally different okay and so we have to risk our job to report it and we're not sure we would get supported right the employees are not sure so what are they going to do about it now when I have projects and I'm over a particular committee or a project or so forth I make sure that I'm connecting with with those level of members that they can feel have an open door policy so even though I sign a project manager to handle a certain part of the project I'm still including myself into the members either just casual if we just having coffee or when we actually working on the particular project at that moment or maybe through email just kind of open up and make it friendly that they can be able to come to me and talk to me that there's an issue and if that's the case then I'm gonna I'm going to address it I'm gonna do it in a professional way you know I'm gonna seek for resolution but my goal is to move forward just like a ship a ship must go forward okay it can sit around and ankle down for a while while he's getting his resources together but eventually the ship is is put is the ship is built to move forward and everybody's in their position working as a team when one or two that's over a certain people on this side of the ship is not motivated they're demotivated it hurts the overall and we and the ship is moving much more harder to get forward through the waters instead of more smoother like it should so my wisdom point is this in leading with expectancy to expand one's projected leadership style the leader in charge of the second level managers prevents us to never really accomplish the goals that we set out to be to deliver our brand message so the leader in us must never revert to the continuous effort needed to oversee those carrying the brand and message and mission message forward that delivers the vision Okay, of the company why would some higher level management assume that the continuum in the second level management will instill the 
integrity, honesty, fairness, strong interpersonal skills and professionalism when they are not being reviewed. You know, you don't, some managers think, well, I don't really need to, I don't want to micromanage so I can just, talking about micromanagement, I'm talking about overseeing, I'm talking about accountability, I'm talking about reconciliation. You have the conversation, you talk about the protocol, the mission, the vision, the message, and you monitor and you go to, I'm going to tell you a quick story. I was at a Fortune 500 company type event and they had certain people in place that were responsible, right? Managers and responsible to this and that. But it was a high, I can spot them a mile away. It was a high level senior VP. And they just happened, that particular person just happened to come to me and just say, do you mind if I could just ask about your experience? Just be, and it was very casual because he had like a, cup of coffee and here I am you know eating some of the refreshments that they have and it was just a nice casual type interchange that made me feel comfortable and that's what you got to do because your rank can intimidate people not everybody's used to talking to that level of authority and so by having it as a casual interchange and an opening question by asking he was polite to say may I would you mind you see and so that comes off by saying anything ordinary I'm gonna follow you and you need to tell me what is something totally different so who are we talking about we can be any manager that assumes what they see everybody else sees the same in the second level management behavior level that the attitude and their approach to conflict and resolution is the same as the higher level management senior VP CEO what have you that is the same and so we have to not think in that level and we have to monitor this as if we're having metrics and to monitor employees we got to monitor the managers as well okay because they are the first line level to deliver the protocol to deliver the blueprint so what it looks like we're well, high turnover when high turnover exists that particular level of manager is actually interacting communicating making decisions that serves sometimes their ego when you see the high turnover in their department or the high turnover over our in several areas that shows that there's an issue Okay, there's a disconnect from the brand message because if you know you're doing your prestige leadership you know it's not you okay right <laughs> you know what I'm saying but you know that it's got to be tied into the management level now I know sometimes companies have a protocol with the board of directors and so forth that they got to roll out this and roll out that that the policies that the manager have to reiterate causes the disruption that people will leave and not happy I'm not talking about that because when you're monitoring this the second the particular level of managers underneath you right the first line in the sense of communicating that you're basically monitoring and obsessing that they're delivering them if they're delivering the message and they have strong interpersonal skills by managing that communication protocol and they're not being producing toxicity and feeling not flexible to the employees you know there's other behaviors to show that it's not the message that the employees feel that that is something else it's the behavior outside of the message that's their personality that's the way they lead okay and that's what you're really looking at because at any rate once you decide on how the company gonna move forward either people are going to accept it or not but you still can communicate the change and communicate what needs to be done in a way that is encouraging and motivating it's up to the employee to decide if they're going to be with it or not but the way it's delivered and managed thereafter not in a authoritarian way that is restrictive and non-motivating that's what I'm talking about so what actually does additionally does it it look like leaders have to be proactive and interactive to their subordinate managers as well as those managers to their employees all the time um, one time I had an issue where on the particular team she was well liked by the senior VP but she was just doing me wrong <laughs> and I made sure I had all my documents and documentation and I had to go over her head to the senior VP and have a meeting long story short once I showed my facts and I, and that's very intimidating but I had to do it because I felt it was wrong and I saw how she was leading and she always seemed fair sometimes what you see is what you get in higher leadership and that's what I got and 
she was very appreciative because I took the time to be ready for the questions she came because see when you go to a senior level manager they're gonna ask you particular questions because that's how they analyze what you're telling them for them to decide and also you got to know that their I wouldn't say pride but their ability to decide to hire this manager is now you bringing them a new light that they actually do not have the strong interpersonal skills that they're being a bully all of that so it takes especially if they have been with them worked with them a while that personality in the friendship has on a professional level has formed so they have to look at it in a biz a lot of managers can't do that that's why it's a risk that's why people don't say anything and the the abuse and the toxicity continue and it hurts the brand and people leave you follow me how that trickle domino effect in this case I trusted of what I saw that this particular senior man I saw her choices and her decisions and I believe that if I presented presented it to her she will take hold and move forward and believe in what I'm saying and sure enough she did and honey I have to tell you when she got a hold of that I never had a problem in that department never after that <laughs> not one time and when the next time that particular manager spoke to me it was in respect of who I could trip who I am and who I contributed to it and that's powerful so that's what I'm saying that's why you have to even if you don't see them someone do have the guts to come in your office and talk about it you investigate it because that's your brand that's your message and if they fall offline don't take it personal because you hired them and you felt that maybe my decision no it's not that because everybody has a right to choose to either move forward to do something positive or negative it's their fault that they took your protocol your blueprint and threw it in the trash or outed it okay which is worse and did this and that to make it their way and they abused the authority that you gave them that you gave them that opportunity so what are the strategies to succeed well one you need to monitor their decisions that's what I did at the senior VP level that's what I did I monitored their decisions, and based on that I knew if I could trust them to come to them da 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 or I waited it out and see eventually they're going to see themselves, right? And so either the way that happens, you have to monitor their decisions, you know. Don't let the employees, because every, like I said, every employee in every level is not going to have the guts, right? Or the, the ability to use the certain words that come out in a professional way. Because talking to a senior VP is a very tricky road. It's like on a tightrope. <laughs> you know you got to say the right thing you you know you got to be ready with the questions when they pop at you you got to be ready everybody don't either don't want to put in that effort so they just leave and quit well that hurts your productivity that hurts your metrics so you got to get to the heart of it and you got to make sure everybody on the ship all these sub sailors or whatever their position are ready and and motivating the ones to pulling the hard work and doing the the productivity and pulling that onto the ship you got to monitor their decisions of knowing why they did this when did they do it who did this and how it was handled and ask yourself if that's what you would have done or taken that option if it was thought of in the beginning that's how you got to monitor their decisions monitoring their decision is the key to their behavior it locks it unlocks their personality right in a business type environment which is tricky it's tricky waters okay and when you do that it unlocks their personality and it defines their level of interpersonal skills it's in my book corporate america surviving your journey to success the number one chapter is your attitude the number two chapter is your interpersonal skills you got to know they got what it takes because basically you are grooming them to be prestige leaders some people won't make it some people they will nonetheless that's what you're doing so number two strategies to succeed is learn the behaviors of your staff yourself that you can be the judge which you are the most prestigious leader in charge you are the captain of the ship you walk around that ship you have conversations with them you build the rapport you still hold your level of authority that they know they just can't speak to you in a type of way or they can't do this and that and expect that da they still you got to just master that communication model and I might come up with a podcast about some of the statements you can consider to say and use because that's tricky too all right number three have interpersonal skills training do a workshop interpersonal skills number one 
Okay, that will uncover most of the toxicity that's brewing that you didn't even know about with your managers that report back or say this and that because you already know that person. So then you can kind of compare and analyze that. I know you don't have time. I know it's a lot on your plate. But at the end of the day, what's good of that having doing all that work when you don't have enough staff to do the work? And you don't you scratching your head like why is all these people leaving? What's going on? Why do we have this high quality? You know, you know why we keep getting complaints from the customers. You got to get in it. You got to make a plan. You got to be all in in that sense. So having interpersonal skills training with the level of managers that you manage is key because they could be the reason why people are leaving. Most employees don't want to rock the boat. You know, they don't want to rock the ship and will sail along until they get and see a horizon of land and quit when they are fed up because they feel the top management level personnel would not believe that their manager that they hired are the problem. So you are more so you got to become more approachable and you got to be ready to invest in why this is good training for those managers at that level. You know, that's what we're focusing on today. So your task to dust to dine is that, you know, consider to have maybe a lunch. I know one time when I worked for another company, big company, we were able to have lunch with the senior VP. She sat right at our table. It was awesome, right? So have a one-on-one. Maybe try that with employees to kind of get their feel for it. Or also with the manager that you represent. Just one-on-one. Or maybe a few of the employees as well. So you get to know them. You keep it casual. You use small topics to break the ice, right? Because you have this high authority. It can be very intimidating to someone else, to don't to other people that don't want to really say much. But you need them to talk. Talking to you, giving you information is knowledge. Knowledge is power. And power is what you will reinforce by your influence to be a prestige leader okay so when you break that ice you being in the presence of senior management is intimidating by most people they will open up when you when you have that casual type atmosphere to you and you will gain much prestige influence which is prestige leadership so your motivational taking away is being a prestige leader is demonstrating the type of behaviors that motivate others to expire into doing and being the best all the time that reinforces the brand of your leadership. So be proactive and accountable to assure your message stands the test of time and the people that you lead. Thank you. Thank you again for joining me for my podcast episode for my podcast show Surviving Your Journey to a Success just to give you some information to not only stay in contact but with the other things that I offer. I provide career consultation offering the first 30 minutes are free thereafter there is a fee access afterwards per hour and can be discussed on a case-by-case basis depending on your need. So if it is an emergency and you need some consultation regarding your career or choices that you're about to make moving forward in a sense in your personal type objectives then you can definitely contact me the primary way to contact me is by email which is info at nichelleanderson.com now I do have a toll-free number on my website now that is actually only for webinars when I'm doing like a free webinar and you're calling in once that number is through that medium and it's only really for that so it's not really connected to me directly now I am working on that but for right now it's not really and when that changed you would definitely get a notice of that to go forward so just to recap my primary way is info at nichelleanderson.com all right so the other thing I want to share with you is that I also provide business courses and self-improvement courses so That overall objective is to help you to create strategies that work for you, to get you motivated, to identify the ways to get your or keep your joy and your mental peace. So I do provide that on the basis of your objective to gain success and as I like to say, sustain success. You can find information on my courses that I release on my official website, which is www.nichelleanderson.com. And you can go there and you can look at the different courses that I am releasing that are available. These courses are self-paced. They will be identified if they're considered to be like live sessions on a regular basis. But for the most part, they are self-paced. During that time, I do have live sessions that once you have signed up 
for the course, you will see that in the schedule of what days that I'm available live that you can talk to me and we can go over the courses going forward, right? On those particular topics. So that information is basically on my website that you can go to, which is michelleanderson.com. Now, I want to do a special call out for listeners that I have seen in my stats that are following me, um, continue to follow me, which I am thankful for. Now, to get into, to get connected more, to stay connected, I'm asking you to consider to join my newsletter that I do send out. And to do that, you just have to submit, of course, your your name and your email. I don't spam. You can always request to, to be taken off the list. I don't send thousands of emails because I don't like thousands of emails from a particular source. So I keep it very, in a way that's informative, of course, because obviously you like the content because you hear and you enjoy it and you're getting something from it, which pleases me to expand that and to expand that and to move forward and to get into other ways that I can expand what I'm trying to do is to form a newsletter to get that set up in the sense that I'm communicate, communicating that I can send that out more quickly actually through uh, a podcast or any type of thing or production that I'm doing where a newsletter is more in the sense faster to get that contact and to send it out on blast right and more opportunity to send more content compared to like social media characters to be able to to get that message out so do consider that to join my newsletter by providing and you can find that link at the end of each episode I have that link to basically to sign up here for Nichelle e-list tips newsletter and um, you could do that and you can see that and click and it's a short form online form it is secured and you can complete that all right the other thing I want to talk about is basically to subscribe to this podcast if you haven't please go ahead of course this is going through Podbeam. I have two podcasts this one of course you're listening to is surviving your journey to a success and you can subscribe of course you should see the subscribe button here at the bottom of this episode or at the top whichever device that you're using now I'm also available on iHeartRadio on Spotify on Google Play on iTunes and any other podcast directories for feed distribution you can connect that way and subscribe and if you like it share it now I am on social media and so you do hear me a lot talk about Twitter I'm mostly active on Twitter I'm also active on Facebook for the most part right now is Twitter and I like the whole concept of keeping it short and sweet but I'm connecting to people in different parts of the world and then Facebook I'm definitely on there as well and you can connect me with that so my Twitter handle is basically twitter.com forward slash Nichelle Anderson my Facebook page facebook.com forward slash Nichelle Anderson fan page my official website as I mentioned earlier is nichelleanderson.com that is my official website is mainly focusing on self-improvement motivation life coaching leadership courses uh, things that I really love to help people what I have learned and uh, and also to connect and to try to create the content in a way that you can feel comfortable about it open up about the areas where you're struggling at and it's usually pretty much our career and our personal life so these self-paced courses give you the opportunity to really think things out because you got to think about it in this in this world our mind has to be able to process so many things in so little time and so you're here you're there you're there you're everywhere and you don't really get the opportunity to stop to think to react in a way that moves you forward and to get things done to get a blueprint and that's basically the two courses that I recently released and I will continue to evolve from that and add more courses of course or you know we do some of the courses that I have and blueprint for success 
it's a very good one in the sense of identifying that and moving to a point that you have a plan and that you can move forward and that's the key so at any rate check that out on my official website and uh, definitely uh, connect with that and share it with somebody else now the other thing I would like to share with you is that of course I am an author and so my very first book that I got published that I was called to do it was my purpose and I see it now and it's a part of my whole podcast show title it's called corporate America surviving your journey to a success it is available on Amazon and Barnes and Noble it's available in book form and ebook Okay, so you can get that at any book retailer in the world that have access to the ISBN for each book. So you can get that and you can download it or you can purchase it or what have you. But go ahead and check out my book and if you like it, share it. Okay, and that was basically given to me to do and immediately I felt that I, I could help college students. You know, I recently had got out of college and I was like, I can help students. I mean, I didn't know the politics of corporate America. And over time, I even got better at understanding the dynamics and the politics of that. And it's very, very important. So if you do know someone that's in college, you got to get them this book. Okay. If you're already in corporate America and you're out of college, you still need to get the book or recommend it to somebody. The book was a blessing. Because a few years later, after I was called to do it, and, I, and it was part of my whole purpose journey, a few years later, I got contacted by Essence Magazine, which people in the States definitely know. That's a major magazine. And I used to love purchasing that magazine. And when I was in high school, and I, just, I just loved all the articles. And I never would have dreamed that one day, if I continue on the road and continue on the journey, that my name, something that I created, would be in, inside a magazine. Isn't that powerful? Where well, it was for me. And someone got a hold of it. <laughs> and make it so bad, I had limited resources to promote it. But somebody was at the right spot, you hear me? At the right time, they had the connection, right? And I'm talking about uh, <laughs> where I lived. Was it a big, famous, big, city with you know so many powerful people I wouldn't say not powerful people but let's just say it was considered a halfway mid-range small town not a small town but you know what I'm trying to say and I had no idea that he could get to one person one person and that person person that person liked it led to S's magazine okay called me and said they loved it and they wanted to feature it and make it what they call the corporate climber bible to succeed isn't that something so that's why you have to identify your purpose and identify your reason struggles and move forward and it will get you to your meant to be it will get you to the blessings that's that will come to you if you stay on focus and stay on the journey and keep hope alive because bigger things are yet to come so let me also just recap on my podcast and we are going to wrap this up where my connect my aim to connect to you is that the regular podcasts are podcast every Monday at 10 a.m. and sometimes I have bonuses and I do release that so but just to recap please uh, go to either my website my official website or to my Podbean podcast homepage here nichelleanderson7.podbean and subscribe and share it and I also have my podcast show notes and that will be posted on my Podbean homepage for this podcast so do keep that in mind. Now, you can also get some content from my other podcast entitled Nichelle Anderson Short Stories and Beyond. Now, with that, I do showcase my love of writing. So I tell stories and I focus on the productions of that into these short stories. And the goal is to also expand from that and create other new stories. Now, that particular podcast is considered premium content, so for the most part of the season, I release clippets of the actual short stories, and sometimes I actually release a short story. To get the full content of those clippets that I do release, it's a Patreon page that I have set up on Patreon, and that you can find the link to. So to get to that other particular podcast that I'm talking about, it is located on Spreaker, my other hosting site that I use to uh, to be able to distribute that particular podcast you can find a direct link to that podcast show on my Podbean 
home page so once you go to my home page here you just look to the left and you see the menu of options of episodes and and podcasts that I did and you will see the reference to my other show which is Nichelle Anderson short stories and beyond actually if you're on one of these directories and you're looking me up just put my name in there and you'll see my other podcast and you could take a look at that in my closing I want to say thank you again for joining me today Here is my closing statement for you. Be you that strengthens and inspires your ability to be strong in your journey in Denver. It's a good thing towards your mental peace and joy. Always to your success.